Well, let's take a moment to preview the teaching just ahead. If anything good is happening in this tsunami economic situation we're in, is that we are the people are waking up and begin to understand the mess that our federal government has got us in. It's affected everything in our society. That teaching and more from Dr. Ed Young when the winning walk returns after this short break. Welcome back to The Winning Walk with Dr. Ed Young. Our website is a great resource for you, so the next time you're online, stop by winningwalk.org. You'll find messages on CD, books, devotionals, DVDs, and much more to help you in your walk with Christ. Our website, again, is winningwalk.org. Now, here's more from Dr. Young and his message, A Broken Wall Street. Then there is the greed myth. The idea that Greed is synonymous with capitalism, and it is not. Greed is avarice. Greed is I want more and more. Greed is when money and things becomes my God. Boy, that's who I'm about. Boy, I want to have. I want to have bigger, better, more and more, and I hold it. Greed is epitomized in Ebenezer Scrooge. Know him, don't you? So we have to understand there is this greed myth that we are greedy. We don't see that in the parable that Jesus told about. They were honored when they used the gift that they had. If the man who'd been given one talent, $1,000, had used it, I'll tell you, it'd have been a different kind of situation there. God wants us to use what we have. It doesn't make any difference. What you have or I have, we use opportunity, we use talents, we use gifts. If I have the ability to sing, I need to sing. If I have the ability to do whatever, I need to use it. That's the basic given principle. If anybody has the idea that heaven is going to be absolutely, everybody's going to be the same, you've never read the Bible. You've never read the Bible. So we have to do away with the myth about greed. Capitalism all about greed. It is not. It is not. And then there's the myth about the win-lose attitude of capitalism. Now, the communists and the socialists have taught us this. The socialists have the idea that the economy is based on win and lose. If I had up here a pecan pie, I love pecan pie. And I said, you know, I want to divide this pecan pie equally with everybody. That's socialism. Everybody's going to get a piece of this pecan pie But I like it so good, I cut myself a bigger slice. That means all of you get a smaller piece of this delicious pecan pie, doesn't it? Now, that's what the socialists say. And if the economy is limited, that's true. That's what Marx taught. What is communism? What is socialism? From each according to his ability and to each according to his need. Dialectic materialism, that's what it is. So if, if the economy is limited this apple, to this pecan pie, I like, uh, you know, coconut pie is good. Anyway, pecan pie, and I get a bigger slice, you get less. That's what socialists teach. But that's not the way it is. It's not a win-lose in the economy. It is a win-win in the economy. The same guy has cut my hair for 28 years. And I give him $20 to get a haircut. Now, he uses his skill to cut my hair. You can debate about that skill, but I've used him for 20, 20 plus years. And he uses his skill. He cuts my hair. I get what I wanted because I got a haircut. That's a win-win situation, isn't it? He wins and I wins. Nobody loses. That is capitalism. That's how it operates. That's how it functions. And therefore, in a capitalistic economy, the pie gets bigger and bigger. And you may get a bigger piece than I do, but my piece I would have is bigger than it would have been if the economy was frozen. And so many times in socialism, the economy gets smaller and smaller and smaller because I realize I don't have to use my gifts, but I get the same reward. In a free society, there needs to be opportunity as best we can, equal opportunity, but there will not be guaranteed equal outcome. See, that, that's who we are. We need to understand that. Now, a biblical worldview, 
How do we get there? First of all, I think we have to deal with the federal government. We, the people, need to get back, get back so much, so much that has been taken from us slowly by bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger government, at least since 1968. Now, some of us have the idea that self-interest is selfishness. That's not true. I got up this morning, I shaved, took a shower, combed my hair, brushed my teeth, self-interest, right? Does that mean I'm selfish? No, the golden rule, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. What does this mean? It means as, as I would do to myself that I should do to you. I want understanding, I want forgiveness, I want sympathy, I want encouragement. That's how I'm to react to you. In other words, the golden rule says what I need, that is what I give. If I need somebody to listen to me, I need to listen to others. And it comes back. It comes back. That's the golden rule in action. So how are we to love others if we love ourselves? If we don't have a high view of ourselves, how can we love others? We can love only in the amount of love that we have received, the amount of love we have given. So self-interest is not selfishness. Other people have the idea that big is bad. Big is not bad, and big is not good. Big can be bad, and big can be good. The idea that little is good. Little can be good, and little can be bad. Size isn't the determining factor. We have to understand that. They can be bad big churches and good big churches. There can be bad little churches and good little churches. So we have to understand that. But the idea that big is bad, how many people do you think are in the workforce of the United States? I'll tell you. It's 130 million people in the workforce of the United States. 20 million of them are employed by the government. This leaves 110 million left. Of that 110 million, contrary to what you hear, 55 million work in big business, big corporation. 55 million work in little businesses and little corporation. That's our workforce. You say, well, big is bad. Oh, no. It is the big corporation, big business so many times that spin off these little businesses. And they, they, they go out and they float out from it. So big is not good and big is not bad. Little is not bad and little is not good. You see, this is our workforce. And the idea, boy, we got to get at those big guys. We want, we want to tax all this. The taxes come right back to the little people, to we the people, you and me, every single time. We need to understand that. And if anything good is happening in this tsunami economic situation we're in, is that we are the people are waking up and begin to understand the mess that our federal government has got us in. It's affected everything in our society. Now, how do we have a biblical lifestyle in the middle of this? Biblical living means hard work, responsible decisions and behavior, not easy believism, scams, or laziness. Biblical living above all means following God's ways and principles. It means restore personal responsibility and stewardship. I would say to the government, you are to follow the advice of Smokey the Bear. Smokey the Bear tells us how to start a fire. Keep it contained, keep it small, and keep your eye on it. And when we, the people, if my people who are called by my name, that's God-fearing people, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. I will forgive their sins. I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land, heal their brokenness. And that's our prayer as Americans today. A Broken Wall Street, the title of our message today from Dr. Ed Young. And it's a real pleasure to have Dr. Young in the studio today to answer some questions. Dr. Young, do you really believe that the United States can find its way out of the economic situation we find ourselves in today? 
You know, I hope and pray we can, Wayne, because it, it is a serious, serious crisis. But underneath all this crisis, we have the free enterprise system, and, and capitalism is under attack. Now, when you read the Bible, you cannot make a case for capitalism. You cannot make a case, certainly, for communism or socialism. But when you read the Bible from the parables of Jesus, the parable of the pounds, the parable of the talents, Mm -hmm. it gives indication that there is a way in which you work and you're rewarded for your work or you're penalized for a lack of work. And we are moving away from this, and the society is becoming more and more socialized. And this is frightening to me. And I would say to those on Wall Street, they practice a free enterprise system, but they have abused the free enterprise system. And once again, it goes back to Washington. Washington has passed laws, Democrats and Republicans, that have made so much of the business of Wall Street incestuous. For example, there was a time in which you couldn't uh, have a, a brokerage house and also be a part of a bank or be a part of an insurance mm-hmm. company. And now all of this has become, under different companies, they've become one. They have merged, and walls that should be built between these entities have been broken down. And that's a big part of the problem. First of all, the government. The government has stepped forward with Fannie and Freddie, and they have exploited people. They've allowed people to to get in debt for houses and cars they could not afford with the idea that big brother, that big brother will bail you out. And so government has interfered with the capitalistic system. And when this happens, that is a disaster. I don't think we need more regulations. We need the laws that are in place to be practiced and to be enforced. And that is what did not happen under the last three or four presidencies. If they've let Wall Street for political reasons, we would guess, because they do donations to different candidates to literally run wild. And the laws that are in place that protect the people have been pushed aside. They've been expanded. They've been abused. Our new laws have been passed for some particular business entity. And that's the reason Wall Street is broken. Not so much they've broken so many laws, but that is the case in some situations that we're finding out. But it's the fact that the government has been permissive. And they've not performed the duty of protecting and representing the people, the common man. Thank you, Dr. Young. Remember, you can request a copy of Dr. Young's booklet, Culture Wars, The Battle for the Next Generation, when you call The Winning Walk. It's our gift to thank you for your donation to support this broadcast. 1-800-350-WALK. 1-800-350-9255. Thanks for spending some time with us in God's Word. Tune in Monday as we take another step on the winning walk.